You know, this, this idea of, of systems biology and health um, is really important for people to understand because, you know, I, I always say, um, well, there are two sayings. I didn't say the first. The first one uh, was taught to me when I was a graduate student, which is, you know, a drug is a substance that when injected into an animal or human produces a scientific paper. Meaning, <laughs> meaning anytime you manipulate a variable, uh, there are two yeah, things yeah. that if you, oftentimes, yeah. if, if you inject a drug at a high enough dose, you'll see an effect. Yeah. If you deprive sleep, you'll see an effect. And that points to several things, but I think both of them uh, have a vector in the direction of this uh, systems biology. Mm. You know, if everything modulates everything else, so if your gut is off, it's gonna modulate your sleep, which is gonna modulate your cognition. And if, you're, um, if you were to boost your, uh, you know, some vitamin level um, ridiculously high or have it ridiculously low, mm. it's involved in thousands of processes in the body. Yeah. And so if you look at any one of those, you might see a subtle effect. I think the challenge of reductionist science and reductionist medicine is because the goal in good science is to isolate variables, yeah. you can't by definition actually look at a whole system. Although now with AI, maybe you could explore how adjusting one variable impacts pretty much every major system of the brain and body. Yeah. But it's just very hard to do. And as somebody who's done laboratory science for gosh, well yeah. over 25 years and instructed other people how to do it and graduate students and postdocs, I mean, it's, it's, it's an art, but it's, a, it's limited in terms of what it can reveal.